Hey, mushroom friends, it's Anna McHugh. I'm spending some time with a lovely collection of Amanita Flavo Rubens. The common name for this is the yellow blusher mushroom. So blushers are a, a collection of species in the Amanita genus. They are edible. I don't typically eat them. I think that for me, most of the time when I find them, like this collection, many of them are bug eaten at the bottom. And they're also just so stinking gorgeous by the time I've interacted with them, I'm sort of on my way. But you know, if you do choose to um, eat blusher mushrooms, that is something that you can research and plenty of people fancy them. But anyway, I really like them because they're just such a beautiful summertime mushroom. They're great for photography. As you can see, they have some of the, the signature traits that makes the Amanita mushroom genus like famous and on all kinds of corny art in your grandmother's kitchen. Um, and, you know, as a result of that, this mushroom also could potentially be misidentified as um, a type of muscaroid or type of Amanita muscaria mushroom, but it is not. And I will talk about that in a moment. So uh, blusher mushrooms are in a uh, section of the Amanita genus called section Valley Day. And uh, almost all of them, I think all of them, have this uh, blushing reaction. And let me find a specimen that has a really good demonstration of this. Okay, so in the case of Amanita Flavo Rubens, you have sort of a, you know, pale yellow, oftentimes with a little bit of brown um, sort of patterned mushroom with a little bit of wartiness on the top. Those warts are, as you can see, a really nice yellow color. And so that's oftentimes you have some yellowy uh, powdery stuff uh, stuck to the base because it's basically like that's where this tissue comes from. Um, but you can tell that it's a blusher and not another brightly colored yellow Amanita mushroom uh, by the fact that it has uh, this sort of blushing or almost like mahogany. Uh, oftentimes people talk about it as a uh, like red wine stain blushing color. And the thing with Amanita Flavor Rubens is oftentimes what you have uh, is this, uh, this is a really good example of it. So you have the mushroom, it's, it's it started out pretty uh, nice and yellow, and now you have brown in the middle and these little streaks and dots of uh, dark brownish red. And so that is a real giveaway. There are other features as well, but that's the first thing that you should look at if you're like, oh, this is a really, you know, this is a great example of a, actually, here's an even better one. So if you found this mushroom in the woods or, you know, in a city park like where I am, you might say, OK, that could be, you know, a couple of different things, uh, you know, and, and certainly um, some folks might think it's Amanita muscaria uh, var gesui, which is sort of a yellow variant of Amanita muscaria. And Amanita muscaria, the fly, fly agaric, is this uh, very, you know, brightly colored, big, chunky mushroom in a lot of cases with uh, warts on the top and it's brightly colored. And Amanita muscaria var gesui is a sort of yellow variant. And we find that in, uh, you know, the North Carolina Piedmont and throughout the Eastern United States. I will um, pause here for one second to put a pin in Amanita muscaria var gesui because there is, um, I don't know if it's been like decided or not by the powers that be in mycology, but um, there is a lot of talk and it is from authoritative sources that Amanita muscaria var gesui is actually uh, Amanita Chrysoblema is how you pronounce it. And that is a mushroom that is, um, you know, described and documented more from the uh, sort of northeast. And it is uh, a warty, uh, you know, Amanita mushroom that uh, is more of a pale color, oftentimes white. Um, and the my understanding is that that may in fact be uh, the same species as our yellowy warty Amanita muscaria var gesui. And so because Amanita chrysoblema was named first, we would inherit that instead of being able to keep uh, Amanita muscaria var gesui. So anyway, if you're like into the esoterics of that, that is something I'm not very experienced with. I think it was about a year ago that there was a lot of uh, conversation around that, but I don't know. I don't have any further details in that. A year is a while in mushroom land. 
But anyway, if you are, um, you know, looking at a warty yellow Amanita mushroom and you're hunting wild mushrooms in North Carolina, the thing that you can almost immediately tell to differentiate uh, Amanita Flavo Rubens or the uh, yellow blusher, even if it, you know, even if you don't, don't notice this blushing, there's a couple of things that will keep you sort of on track uh, with both Muscaria, but also uh, another beautiful little species that I love called Amanita flavaconia can sometimes look a good bit like that, like this one. But anyway, the main thing, like right off the bat, if you're looking at a yellowy mushroom with warts on the top, Amanita muscaria var, guess why, or Chrysoblema, whatever the fuck it is, uh, has white warts and this has yellow warts. In addition, Amanita flavo rubens in general is a much more sort of like, um, slender, smaller mushroom. Uh, in addition, at the base, and this is, you know, distinctive for identifying the whole Amanita section valley day, so like all of your blushers, you don't have a, a big like bulb or chunky uh, sort of zoned um, chunk of tissue at the base. Instead, it's more like a little bit enlarged, more like a, like a turnip is how some folks describe it. Another thing that you'll very frequently see, let me see if I can get a good, oh, there we go, is um, like a little bit of uh, staining. And, uh, and oftentimes this is where bugs start to come in. And so you'll see uh, sort of like little pits and bits of the staining come in. As far as the undersurface of the mushroom, what you have is a really beautiful thing. Uh, another uh, group of summertime Amanitas that I love and I've done a lot of videos about is uh, Amanita section Caesariae. And so this is uh, Amanita jacksonii and its relatives. They are edible. They're, you know, anywhere from like yellowy to oftentimes red and vermilion. And many of them have uh, sort of yellowy uh, gills underneath. But Amanita section Valley Day, Amanita Flavo Rubens, the yellow blusher has uh, white or creamy gills. And you can see they're very tightly packed. Uh, you know, they're not fancy, but they're very pretty. Uh, and then you have a really uh, beautiful ring on the stem that is sort of skirt-like and it is delicate and it's got a little bit of an edge that is slightly thicker and slightly darker in color. And let me see, I'm starting to get sunlight. I really thought I wasn't in this particular spot, but uh, let's see if we can get a good, oh yeah. So you can see there's almost like a more yellowy tinge to the edge of this ring. And um, on the cap, uh, besides the fact that you have the warts and oftentimes just bear in mind the warts will wear off like if they get rained on or whatever. Uh, but another thing that you'll see on a lot of Amanitas, like especially uh, those, you know, Amanita in the Caesarea section, so brightly colored, they oftentimes have striations. So like the little stripy grooves on the margin of the cap and uh, your Valley Day mushrooms in particular, you know, Amanita Flavo Rubens does not have striation, at least not regularly. Um, so let's see if there are any other things that I want to cover with you. Oh yeah, here we go. So I was gonna talk to you about Amanita Flavaconia. Um, let me go out of frame and back into frame and see if we can get a good view of this. It's a real bummer about the sun. Okay, so um, Amanita flavaconia is a very small mushroom and is often more on the red side of things, but like this yellow to red range is really common with our summertime uh, cap and stem Amanita mushrooms. And Amanita flavaconia is a very small little dude and uh, it has one of its very distinguishing features is it has a lot of sort of um, like little powdery bits of yellowish material at the base of the stem. And as you can see, uh, this very young specimen of Amanita Flavo Rubens has that same feature. Uh, but, you know, when you add up the totality of other things, uh, including, and you can even see it as if I, if I start to rub on it, you can start to see that reddish color come in. Uh, you know, it is, it is distinct. But there was one time I found one of these and I was like, Amanita Flavaconia immediately. And I'm like, ah, I don't know about that because then I started to look at, let's see if I have one that has, oh yeah, here's a really good example of, a, of one that's not behaving very well. Okay, so here is uh, one that is really trying to masquerade as um, Amanita muscaria var guessawai. So like at the base of these mushrooms and all Amanitas, like a real key to identifying them is whatever is at the base, is it a, sack of tissue? Is it an egg? Is it a, you know, a big clumpy foot? Does it stain? Um, but, you know, Amanitas, um, it, like the muscarioid ones, have this big chunky 
uh, zone eight base. So you have these like big recurved zones or rolls of tissue. And so I found um, one of these one time and it had these really beautiful, almost perfect little zones on it. And you can see that's the case here. But if you look closer, oftentimes those, those zones are either, you know, in this case, like it's a little bit of the flesh splitting. And then sometimes some of that yellow, um, you know, powdery flocculose material will stick to it. And so it leaves this uh, appearance of a zone, but it isn't really. At the end of the day, you just want to be like, okay, I'm going to pull it up. And if it has this sort of like, you know, not all that impressive, slightly swollen, um, you know, tuber like base, oftentimes with a little bit of red staining, then I'm looking at uh, Amanita Section Valley Day. And if it's yellow, then, uh, and you're in America, in the Southeastern United States, there's a really good ch chance that it is Amanita Flavo Rubens, the yellow blusher. Anyway, I hope you're doing great. Uh, it hasn't been as rainy as I would like, so, um, you know, I will try to continue making videos that are not mopey. I'm gonna do one more shot also of just like the gorgeous, uh, I think my favorite thing about this mushroom actually is how the, uh, you know, universal veil tissue adheres and you leave these really beautiful spots and warts of yellow uh, material. So that's really quite, uh, you know, distinct for this species and it's just a rip roaring good time to find at least something. So uh, find a billion mushrooms. We'll talk next time.